Are you an agency owner, a developer, freelancer, somebody that manages projects or interfaces with clients in any capacity or interfaces with other subcontractors? That's going to be the main thing about this video, the main topic today, because I want to talk to you directly. My name is Mark Joe Samansky. I'm an agency owner. I've been building websites since 2018, uh, and there's just I've learned a ton. And one of the main things that I've learned from trying to run a digital agency since then is the fact that you have to manage expectations. It is probably the most important lesson that you will learn whenever you understand that fully, and I still don't even understand it fully. You will understand, though, that it is you could do so many things wrong, and as long as you manage expectations and your client understands what you're doing for how much, it, it, it honestly solves a lot of problems because at least everybody's on the same page and communication is good. The specific super niche thing that I want to talk to you about today is something that I think if you understand this and you learn from my mistakes, you will be so much better off, so much more quick, so much like more quickly and just improve drastically, basically overnight if you can understand this. I've had issues in the past and even recently where I will have a lead come in and then that lead will be interested in a website, right? And then from that conversation, we'll eventually get to the point where we talk about building a website for them, okay? And I'll scope it out. I'll say, do you need this, 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 X, Y, Z, da, 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 whatever. And uh, it'll be going great. We'll literally, like, we'll be building the website. Uh, you know, maybe we'll, we'll, obviously we'll go through our process, UX, UI, development, everything like that. And then we'll get towards the end and we'll get towards launch. Now, there's a couple tidbits in here. I won't talk about revisions too heavily in this one, but I will, I'm just kind of giving you the overview of what the process is. The main point, the main anecdote that I want to give you and something that I'll be changing, it literally has changed the course of my process here, is you have to, when you are interviewing the client at first, I missed a crucial step. Several times I've missed this crucial step and it has come back to bite me in the ass every single time. When you're interviewing your client in the very beginning, you have to ask them, are you working with anyone else? And I don't just mean, do you have another web designer? You should ask that because you're going to probably need to know the answer, like where their stuff is and da 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 da, whatever, what they've done in the past. That's a good question to ask. But more specifically, you have to ask if they are working with a graphic designer, if they're working with an SEO person, if they're working with any sort of other marketing people at all. Have they done anything marketing related? Ask those questions. The reason you have to ask those questions is because you will be put in a situation almost guaranteed at some point where you are to an extent pitted against the other subcontractors. I don't mean viciously. I don't mean purposefully. I just mean it's going to happen more than likely. And let me give you an actual real world example. If your client is working with a designer and it doesn't have to be a web designer, obviously it could be a graphic designer. It could be even like, you know, just kind of like a, a even a copywriter, anything like that, like any, like even like a social media management company, if they are working with somebody else and you come in and you build them a website and throughout that process, you don't discuss that beforehand, before you start the project, you scope out a certain level of this is how many mockups we're going to do. This is how much UX work that we're going to do. This is how much development we're going to do. Then you get to the revision round or you get to even worse later in the project. And then they bring in other people to counsel and to give feedback on the stuff that you have already proposed and actually done the work for, right? Without any of these other considerations. They bring in somebody to provide feedback or other otherwise, you know, just just give give feedback on the on the on what you've done. You might find yourself in a situation where now you and possibly your team are trying to answer and discuss and not necessarily argue, but potentially you don't have to just field objections from the client. You also have to field objections from the other people they are working for. I, like I said, I've had this happen. Okay. And it's not a bad thing, but it is absolutely something to be prepared for. And the way that you prepare for this, that again, I am changing my process to do this. I am interviewing the client heavily on the front end and I'm saying, client, we're going to build your website for you. We're going to design it. We're going to do all the research. We're going to design it. We're going to do UX, UI. We're going to develop it and we're going to launch it. You, client, need to tell us if you are working with another designer or another SEO person or another pay-per-click person or what have you, because if you are, 
we're going to talk and give them, give us your, their contact information because guess what? We are going to talk to them before, before we even start. And the reason we're going to do that is because we as service providers need to be on the same page with the other service providers that are going to affect what we are doing in our business and in our process. Can you imagine if your design team or you designs a website and then the the third party, other third party designer comes in halfway or later in the process and is like, no, I think we should do this instead of this and this and this and this. You are going to be put in a position now where your client is now has to like listen to two different experts or two different people and 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 try to make some sort of a judgment call. It's going to put them in a weird place. They're going to be asking for that feedback. The other person's just going to be honest and give that feedback. And then you're going to have to somehow make changes based off of some other person's feedback. It's it's a mess, okay? I've been there. It's a mess. It's very simple to solve. It's very simple to solve. Have the conversations up front and, t- and make it completely 100% clear to your client that as a web designer, there are a lot of different pieces. I was a web developer, a freelancer, whatever you call yourself. There are many different pieces that go into this. There's graphic design, there's SEO, there's the actual development piece. You need a lot of people. You need graphic designers for the logos. You need copywriters for the copy, right? If they have any of those people already, you have to chat them up. You have to talk to them. Have literally one-on-one conversations with them so you can you so you can understand and even get the inside baseball on your new client, what they have done, what they haven't done, what they do like, what they don't like to some extent, right? To get another person's perspective on that. Again, if they've been working with a designer for multiple years for offline technically stuff or you know, did not, not like whatever, then you can you can create a better situation for yourself if you do that. So that's the reason that I think that it's extremely imperative to have those conversations at first. And I need to absolutely do that. I'm, like I said, I'm doing it in my process. I would encourage you to have that conversation with yourself. Maybe I'm telling you stuff you already know. If I am, let me know in the comments. Say, Mark, I figured that out five years ago. I, you know, thank God. I'm happy for you. But hopefully this gave you a little bit of insight onto something that I've had to deal with and I've made the mistake on. And that's what this channel is all about. I'm trying to document the things. I'm trying to learn from, uh, I'm trying to have you learn from my mistakes trying to teach some things. We have discussion down in the comments, like I said. So again, to wrap up, make sure you have those con- conversations at the start of the co- of the project rather than after when you've already done work and you're getting that weird feedback or whatever. And again, it doesn't have to just be design. It could be even SEO and everything like that. If you want to be the digital partner, like the main digital partner for your client, if that's something that you want to do and you don't just want to hand websites off, you do want to do that, that's fine too. But if you want to establish a long-term relationship with them, You have to understand the other people they're working with in a similar verticals because those people are your allies. They already know that client, perhaps, if they've been working with them. There's going to be a lot of inside baseball that they could tell you, and you will be able to benefit. Both of you will be able to benefit because you'll be able to work together as people that are in the same industry, similar industries, and understand and can talk a similar language that your client probably can't because they are hiring you guys, you and the other person, because you're experts in your field. So that's all I got. I know it's high level. I know it's just like a weird little niche thing, but I, I'm, I'm, like I said, it's really impactful. You got to add that into your process. I'll have more videos on like the process as a whole and everything like that. But I uh, hope you got something out of this video. If you did, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe if you like the content, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.